Okay, last section here in chapter 9. Um, on the test, one of the biggest issues is figuring out what parameter am I finding a confidence interval about. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to pick, and then we're going to look at run through four quick examples. Not going to do all of them, but just try to clarify what parameter it's looking at. So we've got three parameters. It could be a mean, like an average. Uh, the conditions there is the population has to be normally distributed, or the sample size has to be at least 30 and no outliers. We could be talking about a proportion, like a percent, or a fraction, or x out of y, you know, 30 out of 200. Uh, there, the conditions are that n p times 1 minus p has to be at least 10, and the sample has to be less than or equal to the 5% of the population. Or we could have a standard deviation or a variance. That can be called, you know, variability, volatility, um, spread, or, you know, so something you're talking about, how much do they vary? And there, the population must be normally distributed. Now, there's one other condition. With the mean, there are two possibilities there, and it depends on whether the population standard deviation is known or unknown. If it's known, then it's a Z statistic. If it's unknown, then it's a T statistic. So let's take a look here. Here are the confidence intervals. I'm going to give you these, but that's really not that helpful um, because we're going to have access to StatCrunch for that. All right. So let's look at these examples. We're going to look here and just try to identify what the confidence interval is going to be for. Is it a mean, a proportion, or a standard deviation? So we've got some boiling temperature of a liquid. We've got these six different measurements here. Calculates the sample mean. We know, let's say from prior experience, we know the standard deviation. We're going to try to find a confidence interval for the population mean. So you can see here we've got, we've calculated the sample mean. We're going to try to find a confidence interval for the population mean. We know that the standard deviation is 1.2. So this is going to be a confidence interval about the population mean where the standard deviation is known. And it's known here just because maybe that's some statistic for this procedure that's just, you know, common knowledge or prior data. Okay, next one. We'd like to know the fraction of ECC students who commute to school from their parents' home, so still living uh, at home. We sent emails to their email accounts until 100 have responded, and 62 of the responders were commuters. So don't talk about how great of a sample that would be, because we know not every student reads their ECC email, and not everybody's going to respond. So is it representative? Eh, that's a good question. But we'll just say we have 62 out of 100. We want to find a 95% confidence interval for the fraction of ECC students who commute to school from their parents' home. So here, this is a proportion, this, this fraction of ECC students. That's the, that's the key word there. You know, what percent of ECC students? So it's not the same word, but you got to kind of look at the meaning. All right. Uh, we know from previous examples, IQ is supposed to have a standard deviation of 15. And we're wondering if the standard deviation is true for ECC students. So we collect a sample. Here we have a sample. And we find a standard deviation of 16.2. Do we believe with 95% confidence that the IQs of ECC students have more variation than the population? So we're talking about variation. We're looking at standard deviation here. This is clearly a confidence interval about sigma, the population standard deviation. Last one. Uh, we're looking at scholastic performance, state administrators, a, a state administrator, <laughs> blah, a state administers an achievement test to a simple random sample of 100 high school seniors. The mean score is 99.7 with a standard deviation of 7.9. We want to find a 90% confidence interval for the average of the population uh, that would have been obtained had every high school senior in the state been administered this test. So it looks like here we have a sample of 100 students and from that sample the mean was 99.7 with a standard deviation of 7.9. So we're finding a confidence interval about a mean but the standard deviation here is unknown. Unknown. So we didn't actually do these. Um, we might do them in class if we have time. But just to kind of give you an example of how to identify what confidence interval you should be doing. 
It's a quick way to lose a ton of points on this next um, unit test by doing the wrong confidence interval. Totally misinterpreting and just kind of plugging stuff in and not even looking and saying, well, I'll have stat crunch, so I'll just plug the numbers in. But if you don't use the right table or the right command and you're finding a confidence interval about variance and it's supposed to be mean, I mean, you just totally get mixed up. So identifying which one it is is really going to be key. So that is it uh, for this video, another short one. And again, I'll post the relevant links below.